Hello, and we're going to start off this uh, weekend silver update within the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 are pretty much all the broad market markets look about the same. Why is it important? Well, if uh, the markets of silver and gold are somewhat or decently reflected within that of this market, then I think it would be important to know that what's the scenario most likely to develop if we have a major down move within, of course, the paper market of stocks. Now, the pattern you're looking at is most definitely not a healthy pattern. Unless you are looking for downside action, then the resulting action within this sideways correction has been extremely choppy very volatile within its movements large moves higher large move lower large move up large down and that has been the pattern and it's been seesawing back and forth for the last couple of months or so now in here when the market was down to uh, 10,800 it was okay it's kind of oversold you can see we're at this band here and it's been hugging it for a while. We need to do something at least to uh, do, maybe move sideways. Or, and there we go. There's that sideways. So for this market now to become extremely oversold, it's got to be below 10,000 at least at this stage as I'm looking at it. So the big warning or the big understanding of which is that A, the chances that the markets end up retracing lower. Unfortunately for some people, not so good. And therefore, that can cause a lot of short-term movements as the paper markets go for a tumble. Let's now move on to the silver action. And this is the uh, half-year chart within this uh, market. We'll go well, multiple time frames and start with the most longest term and move to the more, most shortest term. And I've been m mentioning this is pretty much mainly a range more than anything. The range is between $4 and roughly $50. we are near the upper band of this range right now. And if you come out and state, well, there's inflation, that's, that's a totally uh, fraudulent chart. Well, the chart is not fraudulent in that what price action states is what's been here but it's it's good to know yes that there has been inflation and that's what the normal rate of ascent should be higher and it pretty much is because the market starts lower and it's ending higher so you might state well there should be some sort of upward trend and if that's the case we're following it right now and the two questions you got to ask yourself is okay that's right but what is the rate of ascent to the triangle and where would you start the circle at the start of this chart for if in 1968 $1.80 was oversold, you'd want to start it higher. Was it oversold? And a lot of it could be, yeah, you could might say, well, maybe it should be, uh, say, right in here. That's where it should have started. And the trend line maybe should be something like this. Well, if that's the case, then the market, of course, is still oversold right now. That's That's one way of taking a look at it knowing that these types of charts are not supposed to be ones that are neutral sort of like a currency matching where one currency up against another long term is meant to be going sideways where this is not within that structure okay now let's move on to the half year chart and or excuse me the quarter year chart which is pretty much just going to be half this information so you're going to see just mainly this info on basically and when you're within a market that's in a bull run which this one obviously is you look back at when all the price corrections came about there was one in here which uh, these years uh, I'll have to fix that this is not 2011 this uh, just on the top of my mind would be about 2004 Regardless, anyway, the number, the day, the years are not right. I'll have to fix that. Okay, so you have a price correction in here. This was, there really wasn't much of price correction. This was just going in a sideways range to the upside, which was sort of like the same thing that occurred here, which resulted as this being the only price correction. And 
Well, there's another one right in here. And this blue band, which represents the 18 front weighted period of highs, lows, and closes, was involved in each one of those situations. This one hit the 18 period average of highs. This one pierced below the level of lows, and this one so far has hit that level of highs as well. So if this thing just bursts to the upside, you'll be, you'd be saying the same thing. This was your correctional phase, and while well, those who ended up getting in at this point, well, they're the ones that did well. And maybe this may not be the bottom. We'll take a look at the shorter term time frames. After all, if you got in here at, say, 12.75 or 13, you, you didn't get the bottom, but you pretty much did. Because if you bought here and then you seen the, you took this little small hit for a few quarters and then boom, it goes higher. It was only a short term that you were actually in the red. So therefore, if you look at that same sort of th uh, analysis, is that if you bought here at, say, 30 and the market goes to 22 and then boom, back higher, you still did well buying at 30. That's pretty much the basis of it. So after the quarter will now become the monthly term time frame, which is a quarter of this. You're basically going to see just the uh, last little bit in here. And here we are. Within this uh, chart, we look for the corrections again. We started this period off with the sideways correction. And within the sideways correction, when it got going from here, it, well, it got going fairly nicely. And then it corrected within this band once again, had further correction within the band. And then as it got going, it really struggled because it had a break higher, but a two, this is it. This was it for the break, this and this. So it wasn't the greatest of moves. Now you wouldn't be thinking at this point, but looking at the chart that this is going to be a failed move because you're, you, at the time you were finding uh, level of support at a nice level that pretty much was previous resistance and well breaking up from that is going to be pretty uh, pretty powerful well that did that failed and a, a nice powerful move brought us the fast move below here so this is the one thing you want to keep your eye on what happens when you have a major pierce below a level like this and then recapture it it's a failed move basically notice the move that happens afterwards and for now just remember that I state that because I'm going to bring that back up again. So there's that correctional phase and it uh, took a while for it to really get going in here. Then boom, this is where it ended up breaking out. One nice move to the upside, which is not the same as here. That was uh, a, a, a okay or below average move. This was a nice move back now correcting within this band. And you don't know how long it's going to take to correct there. Maybe this is enough. Maybe we're going to have another nine ten candles correcting within it that's a pretty much full year basically and uh, the next one will be the weekly term time frame so last one i think i might have said quarter it was actually a third of the difference this one is a quarter of the difference which means you're going to get the last uh, little bit in here and here we are on this weekly chart which shows how big of a move this has taken us basically from the uh, upper band within this top uh, around $50 per ounce and making it right down to this lower band when it hit $26.30 an ounce last week. And that's a pretty extreme move considering these bands are ex harder to hit basically. I find them to work a lot better especially when I see situations like this occur. So the market is moving at a really uh, more volatile wild stage than its previous moves that it has had seen during its entire rally towards the upside. So the volatility has moved this market higher given the market conditions that should mean one of two things. One is that this thing is having a significant multi long term top. Maybe we're going to continue to go sideways for another 20 or 15 years. That's maybe the most unlikely scenario. The more likely scenario is that things are getting uh, ready for that big uh, collapse within fiat currency and it's just going to continue its wild stages. And if it's wild, that means the more lower we go, the more wild that happens to be. So is it possible that we come down and test this level? Well, within the other previous charts, there was definitely situations where room was available. We'll go back now and when we look at this half year chart once again. 
This thing could very easily go sideways looking at this motion before breaking out of this resistance for another 13, 14, 15 periods. That's seven, eight years. That's based on chart analysis alone. Therefore, within this particular weekly chart, it could very easily continue this rush to the downside. I would expect there to be a very good chance that if we go through the next leg, that we would be hitting a final leg lower. Because I did a thing earlier that stated if you take the levels of 49.81 and you can round it to 50 because you're only looking for approximate numbers anyway, and you put it to the current bottom from what the last one worked out to be, which was 21.35 and 8.46 basically. So you can put any comparison that you want. Well, this number here works out to a shade below $20 an ounce. And that's a spectacularly big number right now because that's the next downside Fibonacci on the multi-series from the $4 and $8 range, which are located at $49.81, $31.42, and then the next one is $20.94. So if this level that we're at right now does not hold, it's... Not only something that would not surprise me if we went down to around $20 an ounce, 21 but something I'd actually kind of expect to happen. And uh, that's just the way that the charts are looking as of now. Now, as far as the wild moves, people talk about if you can't handle the roller coaster on silver, uh, you might not want to get in. I, all I can say is I don't know what to say because it is what it is, basically. And uh, therefore, that's pretty much part of the of of that type of deal. Now, I want to explain more further when we talk about uh, when I compare 1980 to today. Some people were saying, "Oh, this is 1980 all over again." So I'll I'll talk more about that there. Meaning, the lower we go, the more bullish it is. As weird as that might sound. Now, the next chart we go to is a three-day chart, which is pretty much half of what you're going to be seeing in here and here we are now what I want to go over uh, about 10 minutes ago nine minutes ago I was talking about the situation where you with the 846 went way below the moving average and then broke through what happens when something like that goes on and I think this is the chart that's really important because I mentioned that we were going to have one of uh, two failed moves so we already originally had this to become the failure and again, just because that's a failure doesn't mean that's the uh, movement. It's a bear market. But again, if you ever have a situation where we just ex accelerate through the line like this and then we break through it towards the upside, that would be when I would say this thing really has the legs to not only get going, but get going to massive proportions, basically. The next time frame is the daily chart, so basically we'll see the last uh, little while in here. And this uh, this pattern in here, like the Dow Jones I was talking about, it, it isn't healthy. This is not a healthy pattern. This is slow down within the next major shotgun sort of moment, basically. It, it might be that next wave lower and it might be a quick move back up to 40 it, it's the more probable situation is we will have nothing like we had in here which a lot of it would be based on candle size the movements from point A to point B would be but it wouldn't be going from 33 to 41 no it might be going from 33 to 48 instead that's and it won't be lower it would be most of the time in the situation it would be higher then you throw in the reasons why the stock market's going to most likely tank uh, this later on. I think there's a good chance that this thing could have a quick washout. And that's the most common thing to expect is that if it does break the lower points, go down to 21, 22, 24, or any really low number, that it's just going to come back extremely fast, sort of like we've seen in here. So when I seen this movement uh, move from 26, to 31 I want to keep an eye on that because this is a situation where if it moves pretty fast then this could be that uh, nice little bottom but may, like again that that might not be the grand washout maybe they, they have another one later on and if not you're basically looking to 
see the thing start to gain some momentum because the big level is 33.58. We'll go over that on a chart later on. We'll now move on to the quarter day chart, which is basically a quarter of this movement in here. And now we can see that uh, sideways consolidation, significant level here at the uh, 31.70 mark as it managed to find some resistance come down here to about the 30 mark, even the 3050 level as I was stating, and uh, back to this level. If it uh, does find support and breaks through, I'd be looking for a quick move up to about 35 uh, and three quarters. However, if this thing doesn't hold and we move back down to the lower part of the range, then you have to be very cautious there. And um, continuing on now, this is the more longer term of uh, this quarter day chart. The line is 33.58. No magic to the line, just a simple mathematical formulation. And uh, there we can see, which was a level of former support, has now acted as that of a level of resistance. Again, this is the chart I was telling you about where I wanted to talk about that failed move. Because, man... If I look at this baby in here, and if this is a level that will be the bottom and we get above it and just do something like that from this point in here, that's a pretty big failed move, to say the least. So I'm like I said, I don't know what the, the situation is going to be, but I do realize if I'm looking for one and it can find a way to break and hold above well, it has to be this line of uh, 3358, so really hold 34 even, then I'd be really looking for this thing to get going. Again, breaking these two, le two levels of support, not looking so good. The volatility within this market, as you can see, this uh, movement that we've recently had has slowed down just a bit, but breaking 5%, having basically having a move in here, which is about 7 8% from the lowest and highest point in a six-hour period. The time frames I use is from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock and 12 o'clock to 6 on a 24-hour cycle. That is Eastern and Central European time. The reason why both of them is because there's a six-hour gap from the two of them. Okay, so because of that, when you look for this, whatever direction the market's going in, if uh, the market's going lower and this breaks through resistance, then that's probably the movement to that 20-ish level, 22 level that's coming into play. And, of course, if uh, it's on an uptick, then we might be process processing that failed move that I just shown. And maybe this thing won't break it at all. But, again, like I say, you're looking for this to go 6-7% during that time frame. And now quickly looking at this more longer-term time frame. This is the daily uh, tick chart over 11,000 days going back to 1968, which includes the 1980 high. To me, this is this is almost like, I, I don't know how to explain this, but this doesn't look right. Because I look at the size of this range, and you have this little thing holding up. This is holding up this here. So this small little bit is holding up a lot of weight basically and I think the best way of pointing that out it's one long sideways consolidation where it spent a long time within the more lower part of this range it's nothing that had a more aggressive zigzag pattern which I guess wouldn't surprise me had that would have happened however okay so now we see a situation where we make this uh, higher high and I've been, I said before that no, for us to make a lower low, we got to break below 846. So all this means right now is that we're at least going to establish this higher low. Question is, where will this higher low take place? That's why 20 is so big, because it's this previous level of resistance. And just by looking at a chart, it's the first level you would expect for... You could just eliminate all these numbers on the right-hand side. This could be an intraday chart of any stock, and I would be saying it's coming down here, and that's where I'd be a big buyer, basically. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to compare the move to 50, uh, compare from back here to in here, and it's not the same by any means, as this one here created a major change in the trend, and 
Well, the one we have now is something like this. So the red line, that's our uh, current price action. And the more greenish colored line is 1980. So when they approached $50, notice the difference on the way there and the way since. There were people talking about how silver was just going up way too fast. And, well, I look at this and I look at this. No, I don't. I, I can't say it's went up way too fast because we're using a comparison method. And that's what we were doing. We were comparing this in the last 10 years or so. But people, some people were comparing it to 1979 and the run that got us here to the 1980 top. And then the move afterwards. Both times, silver had a original move spike lower down to the same level of a roughly around $33 per ounce. And then they bounced up to about like right in here. So they're doing the same. But this one went lower where this one continued a more longer sideways correction. And it's had a another big move lower, but still not as big as what we've seen. So what does this tell us? This tells us one, that this is not the same as the 1980 $50 top and that what we're getting on the red color line are normal market corrections versus normal market changeovers which was the level back in 1980. Now the, the final point that I want to go over is let's just assume now hypothetically speaking that this green one is not a 1980 level rather it's let's say another stock uh, of some sort and and let's just say they're both subject to be going a lot higher which one would i be choosing to have the highest price the answer would be the green one because it's just a more volatile moving stock or more volatile moving chart Therefore, when this thing gets going, it might get going here from 1600 up to 28,000, we'll say. And this one's only going to go from 3,000 up to 14,000 or, or 17,000 because this one doesn't move as wild. When it goes down, it's not going to go down as much. When it goes up, it's going to go up more. That's the whole point of the situation. So when I was saying earlier that the more lower this goes the more bullish it is for silver that's because if we do have a move that brings us down to this sort of level that's i'm going to say now instead of silver going 120 it's not going to go to 180 because the lower the markets get hit to me the further the upside happens to be that doesn't make much sense and there's even one fibonacci calculation on the 161.8% level that would say the exact same thing that the more that a market is moving in a range the bigger the volatility of it is going to be and uh, this has been way too long of a video and thank you for tuning in bye bye